Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to another ATP video. Today's video is of a special importance. It's about microbiology, don't worry. But this time, it's also related to what we're currently witnessing. It's about coronavirus. During this video, we will talk about the viruses in general to lay down the basic theme of a virus classification. Then we will focus on the corona itself, its characteristics, clinical importance, including COVID-19, treatment, and we will end up with some tips and advices on prevention. So if you're not really interested in the details of the virus, check the video's description down below so you can skip forward to the parts that are related to daily life practices. So what are viruses? Viruses are small infectious agents, or intracellular parasites if you wish, that have genetic material which is surrounded by a protective coat called capsid. This is the definition and basic structure of a virus. Some viruses have more complex structures. In addition to the capsid, some viruses have envelopes on the exterior. Now for the genetic material, it can be either DNA or RNA. And on this basis, we can classify viruses into either enveloped or non-enveloped viruses. The non-enveloped viruses are also known as naked viruses. First of all, make no mistake, COVID-19 is always corona, but corona is not always COVID-19. Corona is the virus, COVID-19 is a disease. Corona in Latin means crown, and that's how corona variants look like on electron microscopy. Coronavirus is a single-stranded, positive-sense RNA virus. Its capsid is helical in shape, and it's covered by an envelope. For the life cycle, and like many other viruses, Coronavirus goes through three steps. Step one, entry to the cells. And studies have shown that the coronavirus uses ACE2 receptor to enter the cell. Step two is replication. And here it uses RNA dependent RNA polymerase. And lastly, step three, where release happens and the virus exits the cell. Theoretically speaking, pharmacological agents can be designed to target one or more of these steps. Now for the clinical significance, coronavirus can affect both humans and animals, causing many problems, mainly in respiratory and GI systems. Many coronavirus strains that cause diseases have been discovered. In humans, not all diseases caused by coronavirus are serious. Coronavirus can cause common cold, pneumonia, which is inflammation of the lung, or more severe conditions such as severe acute respiratory syndrome, also known as SARS, Middle East respiratory syndrome, also known as MERS, and coronavirus disease 2019, which is what we're dealing with right now, and it's known as COVID-19. Coronavirus has been linked to several outbreaks, not the only one that we're experiencing right now. In 2003, we had SARS, and it was caused by SARS-CoV. Then in 2012, we had MERS, also known as camel flu, and this was caused by MERS-CoV. And right now, COVID-19, and it's caused by SARS-CoV-2. Its name is close to the virus that caused SARS in the past because the virus that is responsible for COVID-19 is genetically related to SARS-CoV. All these different strains of coronavirus and subsequent diseases or syndromes affect mainly the respiratory system. However, they differ in rate of transmission, severity, and fatality. For example, although SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 are genetically related, SARS-CoV was more deadly but less infectious than SARS-CoV-2, which caused COVID-19. Now we hope that you have a good background knowledge about coronavirus. Let's have a closer look on COVID-19. Now we will focus on COVID-19. Let's first dissect the word COVID-19. Co is for Corona, V for virus, D for disease, and 19 for 2019, and it was discovered in that year. Fun fact, according to World Health Organization, the first case officially reported as pneumonia of unknown cause in Wuhan, China, was on the last day of 2019. Literally, it was 31st of December, 2019. It's believed that SARS-CoV-2, the causative virus of COVID-19, has originated from animals, bats in particular. 
due to genetical similarities with bats. Then, through an intermediate host, it was first transmitted to humans. And then, human-to-human -human transmission took place, leading to this pandemic. Now, COVID-19 symptoms may vary. Some people might have the virus and be completely asymptomatic, while others might have mild upper respiratory tract infection symptoms. These patients will have similar symptoms like any other flu, such as dry cough, fever, fatigue, aches and pains, difficulty breathing, and less commonly, patients can present also with nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, and even diarrhea. The good news is, is that this makes up around 80% of people who have COVID-19. On the other end of the spectrum, one out of six people who get COVID-19 will be critically ill. Some patients might end up with acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is respiratory failure due to lung inflammation and fluid buildup in the alveoli. Older people and people with other chronic medical conditions, such as diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, or even lung disease, are more prone to progress further into the disease and their case could worsen. Now, how does COVID-19 spread? Human-to-human -human transmission, generally speaking, happens between close contacts by respiratory droplets within a distance of one to two meters or three to six feet. So, if a person coughs or sneezes, respiratory droplets can be inhaled by people close by. Another way, if these droplets land on a closed surface, like a table for example, and then another person comes after a certain period of time and touches the table, and afterwards touches his face, the virus in this case might be transmitted to this individual. Please note that the period of time that coronavirus can survive on surfaces vary from hours to days. This depends on the material of the surface, temperature, and humidity. A study that was published showed that the virus, SARS-CoV-2, can stay on copper for up to 4 hours, cardboard for up to 24 hours, and on plastic and steel for up to 72 hours. If the surface is not clean, take the lead and clean it yourself with simple disinfectants. This should kill the virus. Most importantly, be aware of this fact. Keep in mind that patients with no symptoms can still transmit the disease since some patients are asymptomatic and some show mild symptoms, so you have to be careful. Incubation period for COVID-19 ranges between 1 to 14 days, which means from the time of exposure to SARS-CoV-2 until you show symptoms of COVID-19, it can last up to 14 days. And here comes the importance of continuous hand washing and social distancing and that you don't want to be dealing with patient who is in his or her incubation period and get COVID-19 unknowingly. Why was COVID-19 announced as a pandemic? Well, according to World Health Organization, pandemic is a worldwide spread of a disease. Usually it's from a new virus that most people don't have immunity against yet. Now, how do we diagnose and catch this disease? Patients are asked about the symptoms that they're having in addition to recent contact with an infected or symptomatic individual, or traveling to an area that has an outbreak. Then, the treating physician will decide whether further tests are indicated or not. Remember, it's advised to call the hospital or healthcare facility first before going. This is important because not all cases require hospitalization, plus we don't want to overwhelm our healthcare system. So for the diagnosis of COVID-19, or any other disease for that matter, we look for tests that are highly sensitive and specific, while keeping the cost of the test in mind. You can refer to our Biostat series about evaluation of diagnostic tests to better understand this concept. To date, the standard tests that are commonly used to diagnose COVID-19 is NAT, or Nucleic Acid Amplification Test, Real-Time Reverse Transcription Polymerase Chain Reaction, and this test is applied to respiratory secretions that come from swabs, from the nasopharynx or oropharynx, sputum, aspirate, or lavage. Chest x-rays are not usually ordered for COVID-19. However, the physician might order it if suspecting other conditions. On chest CT, COVID-19 patients might have ground glass opacities. Chest CT is more useful than chest x-ray, and it might show changes even before symptoms start. Finally, 
antibodies against the virus can also be detected by serology, which aids in the diagnosis of COVID-19. As of now, there is no approved medication that can cure COVID-19. Having said that, many patients are being cured by supportive therapy that includes painkillers, antipyretics, which reduce the fever, fluid intake, and oxygen supply. Others with severe cases might need more advanced support, such as being intubated and mechanically ventilated. Also, don't forget that some patients might have secondary bacterial infection, in which case they might need an antibiotic. For vaccines, unfortunately, up until now, there is no proven vaccine against this disease. However, trials are still taking place right now. For prevention, Try to follow these points and this will definitely decrease your chances of getting COVID-19. Number one, wash your hands thoroughly and throughout your day. Number two, wash your hands. Number three, wash your hands. Four, maintain safe distance, one to two meters, between yourself and anyone with respiratory symptoms. Five, avoid touching your face. Six, practice good respiratory hygiene when coughing or sneezing and advise people around you to do so. Seven, follow the instructions of governmental authorities in regard to daily life activities. Eight, stay at home if you feel sick and try to self-isolate. Nine, if you have fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, try to contact healthcare facility first before going to visit them, unless you have severe symptoms. 10, keep a healthy lifestyle, not only during this pandemic, even after. 11. Stay updated. 12. Keep yourself calm, follow these tips, and don't spread rumors. 13. Educate people and spread awareness. And you can start by sharing this video, for example. Small note, use face masks wisely. World Health Organization encourages people to use a face mask if they have COVID-19 symptoms or they're taking care of a person with COVID-19 symptoms. If you follow these tips, then you're actively helping healthcare providers in the battle against COVID-19. You're helping flattening the curve. You hear the word flatten the curve, raise the line, but what curve are we talking about? Well, here it is. It's the epidemic curve. It's called epidemic, although COVID-19 is a pandemic because the curve itself focuses on one geographical location. So don't be misled by the name. In brief, the y-axis represents number of cases, while the x-axis is the time since the first case was identified. And this line represents healthcare capacity in a specific place. If the graph exceeds this line, we will face many problems since healthcare systems cannot accommodate more patients once the number of patients exceeds this line. To flatten the curve, practice social distancing and follow the aforementioned tips. This will maximize the number of COVID-19 patients receiving appropriate care and will reduce the overload on your healthcare system. While you're doing your best, healthcare-related staff are working tirelessly to raise this threshold by many means, more beds, more staff, more ventilators, and so on and so forth. Okay, this was a long video, so let's quickly recap. Coronavirus is a single-strand positive sense RNA virus. Corona is not newly discovered, but SARS-CoV-2 is, which can lead to COVID-19. If you feel sick and get symptoms of COVID-19, call a healthcare facility and seek their help. Follow these instructions to help fight this pandemic. Remember, social distancing today keeps COVID-19 away. And we're done. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Stay safe. Don't forget to like and subscribe to receive our latest explanations. And as always, thanks for watching.